time for the initial concentration to drop to one half. So if I start out with A naught at time t equals zero, A naught divided by two, this is t equals zero, this is t uh, equal t one half. And I can easily find out from this equation what that is, A naught minus A naught divided by two is equal to kt one half. That's all I've done here is I put in a of t is equal to a naught divided by two. So this is going to be equal to a naught divided by two, one minus a half, is equal to kt one half, or the half life is equal to a initial divided by two rate constant. So the time for half the material that you start with to decay, T one half is proportional to the initial concentration for zeroth order. Zeroth order, okay, so zeroth order half lives. Okay, so we have a zeroth order half life. So that's what I had plotted just now. I've plotted the concentration against time, and we get a straight line, the slope of which is k. And so what this tells you is that the half-life depends upon the initial concentration. So the more you have, the longer it takes to decay. That's peculiar or special to zeroth order reactions. It doesn't work for first, it doesn't work for second, only for zeroth order reactions. Half-life proportional to the initial concentration. So here, the time it takes to go from 40 to 20 is a half-life. And so if I click on that little point here, I gotta click right on it, there. So it dropped from 40 to 20. Here it took 15 minutes to drop in this particular case. Now this is a new half-life. Starts here, and it starts at now a concentration of 20, so it takes half as long to drop to half as it did from 40. So if I click on this point here, let me get right. you see now I've gone from 40, let's say 15, to 22.5, so that's 7.5. I've dropped 7.5, which is half of 15. It took 7.5 minutes for the concentration to go from 20 to 10. And you can keep on doing this. You see the, the half-life gets smaller and smaller as you as you move along, because at each stage, and so you see here's the half-lives, that one is twice as long as this half-life, which is twice as long as this half-life, which is twice as long as that half-life of ethanol. And I said, if you know, if you, if you have, uh, the substrate concentration is very much greater than that McKaylee's mental constant I told you about, then it's zeroth order. And so T one half is going to be equal to the concentration, let's call it beer, divided by 2k. And notice that the rate constant is inversely proportional to the half-life. It's also proportional to the initial concentration. This is the initial concentration, how many you drink, okay? So there, there is a biochemical me mechanism. Okay, so that's the biochemistry. But what we're interested in is what happens to the concentration if it's a zeroth order rate. And I know then, up here, that I've got the concentration of the half-life. I can work the concentration of the half-life. So we'll, so we'll take this as, as, a, as beer, you know, as, if you want. And, and the concentration units I'm going to use is, I'm going to say, this is one beer, for example the units of, of beer. And, and let's suppose it takes 30 minutes, T one half is 30 minutes for one beer. That means that after one beer, 30 minutes later, we have half a beer in our system. So that's actually interesting because if I take 
the rake I think is T half is 30, and I've got one beer here, divided by 2K, I can say K is equal to, is equal to 1 60th minutes, the units are uh, beers per minute, because the rate constant, this is minutes, this is beer, so it's one beer, the rate constant is 160 beers per minute. That doesn't change. It's true for all different concentrations. We know 30 minutes time for one beer to go to half a beer. What about two beers? Two beers goes to one beer in 60 minutes. And then, so, if I have two beer, I go to one beer in 60 minutes, and then I go to half a beer in 30 minutes, so it takes one and a half hours. The point being, then, is that if you drink two beer, and the law says you have to have half a beer of alcohol or less in your blood when you drive, then if you drink one beer, you're safe to drive after 30 minutes, but if you have two, you have to get down to the same rate. Nothing you can do about it. You've swamped the enzyme up here. You've swamped the enzyme with the substrate, and therefore the concentration uh, follows the zeroth order. It cannot metabolize it faster. You're at the maximum velocity that you can possibly ma metabolize the ethanol, and so drinking coffee, whatever, I mean, won't work. So for two beer, it takes 60 minutes to get to half a beer, and then it takes 30 minutes from this initial condition to get to, I mean, to one beer, then to half it. So it takes three times longer for two beers than one. If you have four beer, then from four beer to two beers, it takes two hours, 120 minutes. Then it go from two beers, it takes to one beer. It takes another 60 minutes. And then from one beer to half a beer, so you can drive, it takes 30 minutes. So that's 60, that's two, three, that's three and a half hours. Four beers take seven times longer to metabolize than one beer. That is, to get to, ha to get to half a beer. And that's, of course, the problem with excessive drinking.